as, as much as CI trains people to hear the voice of God and prophesy and move in the gifts and move in miracles and do all this stuff, you know what else we spend a whole lot of time on? Character. Forgiveness, integrity, being conformed to Christ. Because you know what? You can prophesy great. That's not usually what sidetracks people. It's the character. It's the heart issues. And God will be faithful to test you. I'm sorry if that doesn't go along with your theology. But tell that to Joseph. Tell that to pretty much any great man or woman in the Bible. They're pretty much without exception. They've been through it. And if they've been through it, guess what? We may go through it. One of my most challenging times in my personal life was when um, we, I talked about my children earlier, um, but when my, we, we birthed our church in January of 1987, and in February, our son was born. We, we had two girls. We were excited. We were having a son. We, we didn't know back in those days. Younger generation doesn't understand this, but back in those days, we didn't actually know what we were going to have, okay? And so... Um, I, I had a very, very difficult pregnancy. I was on bed rest from 16 weeks. I had a two-and-a-half-year-old and a year-and-a-half-year-old, a year-old uh, year, year baby and a two-and-a-half-year-old baby, and I was on bed rest. Number one, I'm not a good bed rest person to start with, okay? Just imagine me on bed rest. That didn't go well, okay? But I was fighting to keep a baby in my, in my womb, and I'd had multiple miscarriages, and, I, and I'd gotten over the grief of that, but now I'm getting ready to birth my child. And he came early, um, but he came with a major facial birth defect. If I could describe it for you, he had no upper lip. He had no hard or soft palate. He had no ability to suck because there was no palate to suck against. The place where his front two teeth grew, grew in a ball off the end of his nose. And when I first laid my eyes on him, I heard the voice of God the second time I heard the audible voice of God. And the Lord said to me very loud that day, he said, Jane, this is not your fault, and you can handle this. And I want you to know at that moment, this amazing love burst into my heart for my son. And we knew we were going to have to have a long process. He ended up having 13 major reconstructive surgeries. 13, from the time he was five months old to the time he was 18. It was, it was very, very difficult. Difficult for him, difficult for me. But in that first month, the biggest challenge was I couldn't get him to eat. He had no sucking instinct. He had to learn how to chew milk out of a bottle. And they would, they would put, um, they put a plastic, like, prosthesis in his mouth that would rub blisters so he would bleed the whole time he would eat. It would take me an hour to an hour and a half. Why am I telling you all this? Because it, it was hard. I mean, it was really hard. It would take me an hour to an hour and a half to get him to take an ounce of formula, and then he'd spit it up, and I'd have to start again. Oh, did I mention that he also was born without the flap in the back of his throat that differentiated between things going into his stomach versus going into his lungs? So while I was feeding him, he would drown. And I kept hearing the Lord say, you can handle this. We love the glorious words, don't we? That talk to us all about the, the great times. But I'm telling you, it's those words that connect with our heart that carry us through the times that are challenging because you will go through times that are challenging. I'm an optimist. I've always been a very positive, optimistic person. But you go through hard times. And God said to me, you can handle this. Well, I'll tell you, my son got smaller and smaller. He was 7 pounds, 12 ounces a month early. Thank God he was a month early, Okay. But by the time he was three weeks old, he weighed less than six pounds. He was five pounds, 12 ounces. My baby was getting smaller and smaller. They were going to hospitalize him. They were going to put a feeding tube in. And I kept telling the Lord, God, you said I could handle this. And I just kept drawing on the grace of God. And people would come up to me and they'd say, I see that you're smiling on the outside, but you're dying on the inside. And I was like, no, I have this amazing grace, this amazing joy I have this, this, this thing that God's put in me because God said I could handle this. But I'll tell you, over time, I got tired. And about three and a half weeks along, my son's getting smaller. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. I've just taken time to feed him. And it took me over an hour to get just an ounce or two down him, and he spits it all up. And I realize I've got to start again. 
And I'm sitting in my living room, and I start to just cry. And I said to the Lord, God, you said I could handle this, but I can't handle this. This is too hard. This is too hard. And I'm crying, and I'm being pitiful. <laughs> and I hear the voice of the Lord again. Let me tell you, I, I don't go around hearing the audible voice of God, but I'm telling you the times that I did. In my living room that night, I heard the Lord speak to me. In my grief, in my sorrow, in my difficulty, and here's what the Lord said to me. Stop it, Jane. <laughs> what? <laughs> Stop it, Jane. I told you you could handle this. Now make a choice. Either you choose to believe what I've said, and I'll give you every bit of grace and joy and sustaining ability that you need to get through this. Or you can choose to go down the road that your emotions want to take you. And I can't go with you there. So make a choice. <laughs> and you know what I said? I said, why are you being so mean to me? <laughs> why are you being so hard on me? This is hard, God. And you know what the Lord said? Make a choice. <laughs> of course I'm going to choose you, God. Of course I'm going to choose to put it that way. Of course I'll choose you. And I want you to know what happened that night. Is out of that, even though I thought God was mean to me, <laughs> you know what he needed to do? He needed to like, whoop, like get me back and get me back in, in focus. And I want you to know what happened that night. The joy of the Lord flooded me that night, carried away all my grief, carried away all my sorrow, gave me the strength. But here's the other thing that happened. My son began to eat that night, began to keep his food down that night, began to grow and grow and grow. And he ate and he ate and he grew and he grew and he's a 32-year-old man today, and he still eats out of my refrigerator, okay? He eats and he eats, okay? I, I just want you to understand, it was about my destiny, but it was also about his destiny. And we can talk about glorious ministry, but let me tell you something. If I didn't choose right on that night, I may not be here right now because our life is a series of choices. And on every given choice, every given a uh, juncture of your life, you've got to learn to make right choices. You've got to choose God above your emotions. You've got to choose God above your offense. You've got to choose God above your fears. You've got to, you've got to choose his way and his will for your life. You say, well, uh, God hasn't spoken to me in an audible voice. Yes, he has. Read your Bibles. Pick up the word and read your Bibles. Sometimes when we get in a situation where we're hurting, we're waiting for a prophet to come and prophesy to us. And God's saying, I've given you the wealth of the treasure of my word. And I believe we've got to get back to the foundations and the grounding and the founding of the word. And then out of that, God has an avenue to come and speak to us and to come and connect with our hearts. If we're going to change a region, we got to start growing up. We got to start growing up and taking responsibility. We got to deal with our hearts. I can stand here and tell you story after story of people that have been in ministry, that have been great influencers in the kingdom of God, that are doing nothing for God today. Why? Because they let offense get into their heart. They got offended with people. They got offended with God. They got offended with the process. They checked out. They said, if this is the kind of God, I'm not going to serve. I'm just telling you, He, our God is good all the time. Even when God was being straight with me and seemingly mean or hard on me what was he doing he was forcing me to make a right choice and I'm very black and white so guess what God did he gave me a black and white choice make a choice Jane that way or that way God is good all the time but we got to get our heart in position put your hand on your heart just pray in the spirit for just a minute <sighs> Jesus, you want to ruach us. You want to fill us with your breath. You want to fill us with your life. God, Mary's name must have, may have meant bitterness and obstinacy, but she, Lord, she said, be it unto me according to your word. Be it unto me according to your word. 
And Father, every one of us, God, have had injuries, have had offenses, have had hurts. And those things can break us and destroy us, or they can make us who we are. Just as you stay in this place of intercession, just let me just say to you, Dutch Sheets brother Tim um, is an apostle. He's a, a church in Ohio. And he's one of these guys that loves to, like, watch the surgery channel. Are there people in here that like to watch? I actually really like it. I know that's kind of creepy, but I really do like it. Um, and my husband's disgusted by it, okay? But he, he really likes it. And so he has a guy in his church that's a cardiologist. And he said to him, sometime, he said, would it be okay if I came in and watched an open heart surgery? How many think that would be cool? I just think that would be so cool, okay? <laughs> There's always a few in every crowd, okay? Um, and so he made it arrangements, and on the day of the open heart surgery, he put on the mask and the gown and the things over his shoes, and, and the doctor had him come in and stand in this corner, and he said, I'll explain what's, what's happening. And so they came in, and they disconnected the woman's heart, and they fixed what was wrong, and then they hooked the heart back up, and then at some point before they close them up, they take these two little tiny paddles, and they shock the heart. And when they shocked the heart the first time, shoo, nothing happened. And so they started massaging the heart. The doctor started massaging the heart. He says, oh, yeah, this happens sometimes. He started massaging the heart. He shocked the heart again. Shoo. Second time, nothing happened. By now, you can kind of feel the tension building in the room because that doctor may have done everything right, but if that heart doesn't start again, A third time, he shocks the heart, and nothing happens. And the doctor looked at the pastor and said, it's time to pray. And he starts massaging the heart. And the pastor's over there praying. And then the doctor does this. He leans down, and he whispers, and he says, Marie, it's time to tell your heart to beat again. And within seconds, boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom. Come on, church, we got to tell our hearts to beat again. Come on, just begin to tell your heart right now. You've been hurt. Maybe you've been disappointed. Maybe you've gone through a divorce or you've lost a business or you've lost a child or whatever it is. Just speak to your heart and just say, Father, I just, I just command my heart, Lord, let my heart beat again. I forgive. I release. Now, Lord, just let the healing balm, let your healing oil just come into my heart tonight. Lord, just, just touch me. God, I'm shifting into a supernatural mindset, but God, I need to get my heart in position. And I pray, Father God, that you'll bring the healing necessary so that I can move forward.